you doing? You helping me out in the garage, are you? Are you helping? Good girl. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel with you again. And today we're going to look at putting the brakes onto the hubs. And then we're going to be fitting the bearings into the hubs. Fitting the, the hubs onto the axle. And then we're done. So, um, just quickly, as I said before. Very unusual means of um, fitting the discs. They actually go on the back of the hubs. This is the wheel face here. And then this is the back face. So, as you can see, I've masked all this off. I've not got any gloss black paint on the... Uh, contact areas at all. There's only a very thin coat of primer and then I've gone round with a, a bit of scotch bright and just sort of basically made sure there's no edges or anything. I've tapped all the holes out with an M10 tap, uh, blown them all out with an airline and then same on the disc, cleaned all that off, blown it all out so we're all good to go. Um, excess paint on the disc here is basically there just for protection. Um, I've scraped away the worst of it and then when we come to drive it the, the pads will take care of that. So um First thing I'm going to do is a little bit of grease, just a touch um, on the faces, just to prevent any corrosion buildup. Um, it, it's it was all quite rusty when it came apart. Um, I'm afraid you get capillary action pulling the uh, pulling the moisture in, and I'm just going to put a little bit around this bore as well. It is literally a smear. It's nothing. You know, it's not um, it's not going to centrifuge out onto the brakes or anything. It's just literally, and this chamfer here, that's in free air, so that will rust like buggery. It's just to sort of help out when it comes to taking it all apart again. There we go. And that little tiny bit of grease, believe it or not, will work wonders. It's literally just a very light, very, very light smear. Okay. Right. So we can drop the disc onto the hub now. And it is a, it's a kind of interference fit almost. Now I'm also going to put some grease on the threads. Um... because I don't want them to rust. So I think I might put a drop on the back of the head as well. Just enough to let it smear around. Just a little swipe on the threads and a little, that's all it takes, just a little, just a little smear. And I'm putting these bolts in now because they're going to make sure that when I push the disc down onto the hub, it keeps everything aligned. And the grease on the threads will just stop everything corroding together. And the grease under the head will stop the corrosion in the bore. I'll get rid of the excess. There we go, and then they can be wound in 14 millimeter socket. They're actually 12 point bolts. Look, make sure it's even, so it's coming down square. And then we should be able to pull it down for the last little bit. There we go. So then it's up. So we'll get those torqued up in a second. I'll get the other one put together and I'll show you how we torque them up. Right, so this is a trick I learned from, um, I can't remember if it was Mike over at uh, Botanica Restorations. 
or if it was Chris over on the Trader Fitters Toolbox, but it's a fantastic idea for getting these discs off or on. You just get a wheel, okay, I've got a rag in there so I don't scratch the paint, um, but basically just get the wheel, get your studs down in the holes, okay, and then you can come along with your torque wrench, and these are 73 new mirrors, and you can basically just nip them up first, you can go round and you can tighten your box down without everything sliding all over the floor. Just like so. Absolutely brilliant idea. So thanks Mike, thanks Chris, whichever one it was. May have been both of you. But yeah, brilliant idea. There we go. Just go around and check now. Two, three, four, five. There we go. Easy as that. Brilliant idea. Well done. Okay, so it's time to get messy now. Um, we're going to do the, do the wheel bearings. If, like me, you're stripping yours and you don't need to replace the wheel bearings because they're in perfectly good condition, you can see on here these rollers are shiny. There's no scoring on them. There's no chipping on the bearing. There's no scoring in the race. Everything's lovely. You want to know which is in and out, and you can't mark them because you need to wash them. So what I always do is a washer on the outside, okay? So cable tie the washer to the outer bearing, and that way you know you're, you're good to go. Now this bearing here has got this dark marking on it, and this bearing had hardly any grease in it at all. And this, as you know, I bought this new from the factory, so I know it wasn't... Uh, no, it wasn't a, 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 an owner that did it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we found lots of things wrong with this one. But anyway, um, we're going to grease these bearings up and put them in, and then we're going to push the seals in to hold these bearings in place. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to take my grease gun, and we get plenty of grease. And we're going to do this. Get plenty of grease onto my finger and we're going to work this into the bearing take some more now some people go way overboard and put way too much grease in their bearings um, this tissue is becoming a pain in the ass now um, you must be careful not to put too much grease in them because all that happens is it will heat up, expand and it was out. That's my opinion. Um, as long as they've got a good coating of grease, that's all you need. They don't need to be absolutely swimming in it. Um, all that happens is the grease that's in between the two bearings in the middle just dries up and becomes a bit like a dried egg yolk mess in the middle. So uh, as long as the bearing's got a good good coat of grease, we're going to push them in from the top. Every time I turn the camera on, every dog in Gloucester starts barking. <laughs> Luckily Jess hasn't started. So anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off and I get this done because it's uh, like washing paint dry, isn't it? Okay, so uh, those bearings are in now. We've got a nice amount of grease in there. So uh, that's all looking good. Remember to keep, when you're doing it, keep turning the bearing. When it's in your hand, you know, push the grease in here, in here, push the grease in here, push the grease in from the side, keep turning it. And you'll find that you can push the grease in there and you turn it in 90 degrees and you'll find that there's nothing on these rollers at all. And now uh, you just need to keep pushing it and pushing it in until the whole thing is all coated in grease and then you know you're good to go push it in and then the last couple of fingers of grease around the outside there job done so um now we need to look at fitting this seal now this seal has a lip on it which goes up against it's a soft lip and that lip actually goes up against the back face of the uh, spindle so that keeps the dust and crap out and then you've actually got the seal here which is acting on the actual um which is actually on the actual um, axle itself. So you've got the dust seal here pressed up against the flat face, like so. 
and then you've got the actual seal there on the diameter. You can see this is pre-greased, you can see the, the grease inside there, but we need to make sure we get some grease on this dust seal because we don't want that running dry. So we'll just get a thin smear around the inside. Don't go caking it in grease because it'll just attract dust. So obviously when we press this in, it needs to be pressed in flush with the face, flush with the mounting face here on the back face of the hub. Um, and obviously we don't want to be pressing on that seal. So if you've got a big bit of tube or something, you can use that. I've actually got made up a tool because I'm lucky I've got a lathe and stuff. And uh, this is basically a piece of black nylon and it's uh, 71 millimeters diameter by six millimeters deep bore in there. So the seal sits in there and we can press it in without damaging that um, without damaging that seal. If it was just the one, I would find a socket or a bit of tube or something. We we'll use the old seal. But um, as there's four of them and I've got to do them, I thought I may as well just make this up. So as I say, if you want to get someone to make this up for you, you can make it yourself. 71 millimeter bore, um, six millimeter deep, and that will clear that, um, that seal then. So we can put this on here. We can get it going like so. And that is actually a very easy fit in there. I may be able to just fit this by hand. I was going to put it on the press, but I don't need to. Look at that. That's in. That easy. So, uh, that's a nice easy job, isn't it, for you? <laughs> so, uh, we need to get a little bit of grease on there, which I can just take some out of the bore. And just get some grease on that lip. Just like so. And then we'll do the other one. And that seal is, by the way, that is, uh, again, Cortico. And it's FTC4785G. Okay. So uh, get the other one done. And then we'll get these on the uh, on the axles. Okay, so as you can see now, the bench is uh, a mess. Um, so we've got the hubs on. The bearings are all in. And everything all greased up. Got some new nuts. These are the nuts where you actually stake over the edge. This is... Uh, this is the newer type on the TD5s and everything. Uh, the number of this nut, if you want to use it, is RFD, what's that, 100,000G. And um, there we go. I, I would suggest replacing these. If not, what you can do quite often is take the nut from the left, put it on the right and vice versa, because the stake will probably be in a different place. So uh, if you've managed to get them off without wrecking them, then um, that's all good. So we'll go over to the axle, and you can see on here what I've done. Um, Axles in, uh, the bearings are in there, so we've got the washer down here, the washer's got a flat on the bottom, a flat on it should I say, and that's going to go to the bottom, because the factory built my axle upside down, I've done it the same, so there we go. And the other thing you can see is in these holes here, these holes here, these are the back of the holes where the bolts are, the disc, that holds the disc on, so I filled them with some silicon just to stop the threads rusting and everything in there so the bolts are greased and now they've got that silicon in there so that should all be good so now this nut will go on now it's already greased and everything and then what we can do is just screw this nut on like so until you feel it start to nip up and then we can give the bearings a turn and we can see that it's all Nice and smooth and quiet. So we get the torque wrench on there then and we'll tighten them up to 210 newton meters. Stake the bottom over. Job done. Right then guys, uh, we're done. Um, that's the axle all together. Hubs on, uh, hub nuts on. Hub nuts are now staked, you can see under there. I just basically got a chisel, held it on its side and hammered it up to, uh, to get that nice and flat. Um, also down in here we've got the this is the union, this is um, M12 by 1.5 tap thread in the axle, which I did before it was painted. And this is the push fit fitting for the Gwyn Lewis wading kit. So that's gonna be in there. This is um, designed, you can either take the nut off and screw it in solid, or you can leave the nut on. Underneath that nut, there's a thick O-ring, so that'll help it seal. And I've also got some thread lock on there as well, with grease on the finger. So um, the pipe, you can see here, there's a pipe which is welded in there. And that's going to take the, the breather pipe, it's going to go in there and into there. If I can't fish it in that way, um, because this slot really is too much to the left, or did I draw that hole too much to the left? I don't know. Or slots too much to the right, should I say. Um, 
what I'll do is I will actually swivel it around so it's facing sort of here and then I'll bring the pipe in and, and bend it round uh, using some heat just to um, just to put a bend in it. Um, so as you can see we've got the seal in the diff, we did that didn't we? We've got the nuts on there, stainless nuts and stainless washers. Then we've got all this done. You can see the brake back plates are on. Uh, it's just a, a slot here, just the slots over there. Um, and then on this side you've got the bolt here which is your stop. So that's your steering stop. It comes up against the, let me see if I can get any show you. Here we go. That bolt comes up against the up against the hub there to stop it, stop yourself over steel. I obviously can't set that until I do the um until I've got it in the chassis. Um then we've got the the nut here. If I get on it. That nut there actually uh holds the brake back plate on, but obviously they can't tighten that up until that's done. We've got one little nut and bolt at the bottom. Where are we? Here there's a little M M6 nut and bolt down there. So that's done. Um, again, this side's all done up and staked. Now the other thing you'll see, I haven't put the brake calipers on. Reason for that is if it's stood outside and they get water in them, then that's going to be disastrous. Um, and also if I have the pads in them, there'll be lots of friction from when I'm trying to push it around. I also haven't put these, um, the driving members on the outside. I'm going to get some uprated ones. I'll probably get the Ashcroft ones. Um, basically because it'll make it very difficult to manoeuvre around. Now that we've got this um, torque bias and diff in there, it'd be very difficult to make the axle, if I'm rolling it around on the floor, it'd be very difficult to make it go around corners. So what I'm going to do is just get a piece of plastic like this here, and I'm going to put that over and then fit the wheel. So it will be kind of sealed from the elements and I'll still be able to manoeuvre the, um, the thing around. So there we are guys, that's basically it. I don't think there's not much more to say. I need to get this raised up now, get this frame off, and then get the get, get a couple of wheels on there, and we're good to go. So um, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments below if these videos are too detailed, you find them boring, um, please let me know and I can just skimp over things then, perhaps you know, do a whole axle build in a one ten minute video or something. Um, or if you do enjoy it and you like, you know, you like the, the, the sort of every nut and bolt content, then uh, also again, let me know. So um, thanks for watching, guys. This has been part three and that's it for the front axle. And I think the next bit's going to be the rear axle or maybe the gearbox. At some point, we've got to get that engine built. That engine there. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.